All right, guys, so haven't done this in a while. Um, home from school, getting back into teching for a little bit. I'm working uh, 40 hours a week now, so even though I'm not in school anymore, I'm still very, very busy, so I haven't had nearly as much time for this kind of stuff as I would like. Um, however, today we have my brother's DSG that I built for him. Actually, I think it's been at least two years now. Um, I built it two years ago, and it's finally shit the bed, so I gotta take it apart and see what's wrong. Um, kind of going along with the fact that I've been out of this for so long, I don't remember exactly what was wrong when it actually failed because I've, it happened a while ago. I'm just getting around and fixing it now. Uh, I believe I thought it had something to do along the lines of a strip piston. However, I don't even remember if that was accurate anymore. So I'm just kind of going to open it up and see what we find. Now it's a JG, so I could have swiveled the top, but I'm just taking the receivers apart anyway, so um, I'll take both of those pins out. They should be able to swivel, if I remember correctly. Perfect. There we go. So what happened to the JGs is that I just dropped it. So it's, I think JGs, KWAs, and older TMs, I don't know if the new TMs do this too, but the uh, the top swivels down almost like a similar to a real AR receiver set. It swivels like this. That's why it has a two piece hop up system right here. See, there's no hop up. There's like a little nub. Sorry, I think I was out of shot for that one. Um, so there's no hop up there. So there's a two piece. This is empty. This is just the bottom half hop up, and it swivels like a real AR receiver. Um, so it's I think TM, JG, KWA, and maybe some others do this that I'm forgetting. However, because of that. Um, it was it when it, when you lock it in place, it, there's two tabs that bend inward and put pressure outward onto the lower receiver, so it gets very stuck sometimes. So what you're supposed to do is leave the front pin in when you go to swivel it. That way, it just swivels up. I took it out because I just didn't think it would be that stuck, and that's why the receivers fell apart. Because this just slots right in. There's almost no resistance on that at all. It's the resistance comes from the tabs back here. So this is actually this is fine. The barrel assembly. And the hop-up is not giving us the problems. So I'm going to put this to the side and um, try to not lose my uh, retro arms get gearbox screws there. All right, so this is done. Um, these I will store, and then now we're going to get into the lower receiver. So um, take off the battery pack and the stock for now. This is the first gun I've teched since I left for college. Um, so I've been out of this for a while. I have not done this in a long time. I finally recorded a podcast with Ryan again after so long of us telling telling ourselves we were going to do it and never really did. And it's just, you're a lot busier than you realize when you actually go to college and have a job and start working. You have all these expectations for how you're going to spend your time and then realize that you just don't have the time, or when you finally do have it, you don't feel like um, doing work, essentially. Alright, so we are going to take this off. Actually, I'm going to take the hop off first before I forget. So, again, this is a two-piece hop-up design. So there are two screws, one here and one here. that are on the lower half of the hop-up. So we're going to take those out real quick. And you can actually modify these bodies to accept, I'll call them standard um, one-piece hop-ups for M4s. With a Dremel tool, you just cut out a little slot in the lower receiver where the hop-up would normally go and give it a little bit of variance so that the spring or if you use O-rings in the hop-up can compress it against the gearbox shell. Um, however, there's no need. It works fine. So that's going to stay like this. We're going to actually get this part out later when we take the gearbox out. I'm just taking the screws out now so I don't forget. Um, now we're going to flip over to this side. And this screw looks like it's a hex screw for the mag catch. So we're going to try and find that tool. Oh, oh please be a hex because I don't have one smaller than this. That do anything? No, it's not. Awesome. What is this? It is an extremely stripped tech screw, is what it is. 
All right, well, this is going to be a pain in the ass. So this screw is just very, very stripped. So I'm actually trying to put pressure on the side of the screw and bend the whole thing. I don't know if this is working. Oh, it is working a little bit. It's going to take me forever to get this screw out. Uh, I'm probably going to look for a replacement and not put the screw back in the gun because this is just going to cause a future headache for me. That's one thing, too, a lot of people don't know how to do when you're getting into airsoft. It's not specific to airsoft. It's just like mechanical work in general. Is that if you go down to your local hardware store, let it, whether it be like a Sherwin-Williams, a Lowe's, a Home Depot, they're going to have a section that's just all like hardware, including screws. Like just yesterday, I went down to my local hardware store. It wasn't even a big one. It was just like a local small business hardware store. And I, I, I needed to replace the stock screws on my D-Boy Scar. Now, if anyone owns that gun, you know that those screws get very loose very quickly. And they will not stay, not, they strip and they don't stay tight. So your stock is extremely loose on the gun. And I, just, I brought one of the screws down to the store. I, I sized it with a bolt. So I just took the screw and tried a bunch of different bolts on it and found one that finally fit. And then I used that bolt and tested other screws at the store to find a screw that was the same size, or same threads rather, as the one that I was on the scar. And then once I found the right type of screw, I just found one that was the right length. And voila, I replaced all the screws on my scar. They no longer have stripped threads and they are extremely tight and I don't get any more problems. So I'm gonna see if I can just twist this out now. There we go. All right, so I got the uh, mag catch out. That was very annoying. Um, so yeah, if you have a strip screw somewhere in your gun, don't put it back in. Take the extra day, go down to the hardware store and find a replacement because you're just gonna create a headache for yourself whenever you have to open your gun up next. Because if, you, if you're in airsoft tech and you know once you close that gun, it, it's never closed for good. It always gets opened again. Um, next, we're going to tackle the stock tube or the buffer tube. So for these, for M4s, you're going to need a really long Phillips head screwdriver. Um, and you're also going to really need to try and find out where that stupid screw is down there because you're kind of just throwing shots in the dark as to where it is. So I might actually get up for a second and look through the, um, with one of my lights and try to find it at a good angle. Just so I can get, get this thing fixed. Yeah, this is a very awkward screw to take care of. So once you got it locked into place, it's just a very long screwdriver that you gotta put down. Now again, so this gun's obviously rear wire. You can see a, the, there's a homemade MOSFET actually. That's why it's kind of big and not as clean. It was just a quick job that I did for cheap. Um, so now this is done. So what I like to do is get the screw and washer out first before I pull the wires out too far because everything just kind of gets stuck inside if you don't do it that way. However, sometimes you have to work around what you got. And uh, now again, my MOSFET's in a position where it's actually, it's that's what's blocking the uh, screw and the um, buffer from coming out. So I'm gonna try and poke them out with my screwdriver a little bit. So mine's actually right on the very, very edge. It's just that the MOSFET is like the perfect length where it's inhibiting this from coming off. There we go. So we got those out. And then this actually came off too. Next, that's perfect. It's just the stock adapter. I mean, the um, sling adapter. Now we can slide the buffer tube off. Just thread the wires through. If you have any sharp edges like I do when I cut it, just be wary. You don't want to get the wires caught on that. All right, once you pull those through, 
now you have your gun. Um, actually, you got most of the outside taken apart now. So I'm going to bring this back into view in one second. Um, so I just I can separate. I'll put this to the side. Put all these parts, keep them together, so I know where they are. But I want to give myself as much room as I can for the internals and actually taking it apart. So these screws I'm actually going to put in my mat because I don't want them rolling away. There we go. Still put one there. And one there. Just so those don't roll away. I don't like to lose those. They're very easy to lose track of. Alright, so now we're down to here. So once you're at this point, um, the next thing you have to do is take apart the lower receiver um, obviously starting with the pistol grip now the reason why is because not only does the motor sit in here and actually enter the gearbox shell um, however there are two screws sometimes up, actually up to four screws connecting the grip to the gearbox shell so there you, you cannot take the gearbox shell out without taking those screws out because the lower receiver is in the way um, so we're going to uh, tackle this now if I remember correctly, I think I actually soldered the wires on this MOSFET to this motor. If that's the case, I'm probably going to stop the video quickly and do a clip because my soldering iron is off and not warmed up and I don't want to waste your time waiting for it to warm up. So I will have a clip clip taken out there. Um, however, we're going to get down to it again. So down here, I see there's your hex screws. More than, more than likely, they are stripped. So um, I'm just kind of kind of hope that they're not too bad. No, they're actually fine. Okay, good. A lot of cheaper quality screws in general, no matter what type they are, like to strip. Um, however, in my experience, because we're a lot of airsoft stuff, they use a lot of hex keys or um, Allen keys, and they don't tend to be the nicest quality metal for the actual screws themselves and they like to strip a lot and give me a lot of headaches. You can kind of see, I'll show you after on this plate, the, um, I actually, uh, yeah, so the, this is soldered in place, so I will have to, to desolder this in a second. However, what I want to show you is that there's a plate here that on the plate, hopefully I can get some light on that for you guys. There we go. You'll see two things. One, you'll see there is a black line going across the entire thing. It is on the metal, the brass adjustment, and then outside. That is so that I know where my motor adjustment was set. And there's also, you can have some Teflon tape that I put in between the threads. And that just stiffened the motor screw the adjustment screw in this base plate in this heat sink it's not really a heat sink it's plastic but in, in this base plate in this case so that it would not lose its adjustment and my motor height would stay static that is a lot of your standard um m4 grips at least it's because the design these screws are very loose in the plate and they will not hold their position for very long so Simple mods, mods like this where I just, I stuffed the threads with Teflon tape, made them thicker. It just made it stick and hard to adjust, a lot stiffer in its spot. It keeps the adjustment. And then I also made the line just to confirm to myself. So if it did um, start to unscrew, I'd be able to see that and readjust it. L uh, little tips you can do along the way that save headaches. However, I'm going to um, cut the video now. I will desolder the motor and then continue from there. All right, so I just <clears throat> desoldered the connector to the motor, and just so you guys can see, so I had my black, my negative wire running around here, my positive wire running around here, and I had both of these wires directly soldered to the motor. So normally you'll have clips that go right over and slide down and crimp on. I did not have that. So here's my motor. So initial investigation. Um, this is a Lonex A2 Titan. So it's not the newest batch. I mean, again, this gun was built two years ago, so it's an older Lonex A2 motor. But normally these motors start to die after a while, and the pinion is an especially weak point. Um, I forget if I swapped the pinion on this or not. I very well might have. But there's absolutely nowhere on this pinion whatsoever. I'll try and get it for you guys in the uh, actual camera. 
But there is, um, see, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. I will try my best. There is absolutely zero wear on this pinion. I don't actually know how, this, how the GoPro is going to pick it up. I'll try different angles. But, um, yeah, normally you'll see is discoloration and wear and the metal starting to shard. There's even, like, the black paint that they finished. Not paint, sorry. The black finish that they gave the uh, the gear is still there. Whether it's the stock Lonex one or if I put, like, an SHS one, for example, on. It doesn't look like there's any JB weld. Which, if I did, there'd be a layer of JB welds here. That's how I do them. So I think this is the stock Lonex still. And normally these are known for shitting the bed and dying. But, like... This is very nicely held up, so I'll put this to the side. Um, the motor itself is starting to wear down, though, aside from the pinion. Uh, I know this because the RPS of the gun, you when I first built it, was around the 57, 56 mark, and now it's lucky to get, like, 49. So, again, two-year-old motor, been running into DSG, hasn't been used heavily, I would I would say. Definitely not heavily, but enough where it, it's, it's starting to wear down. Um, so that's... I'll be put over there. Um, once you're done, like I said before, there are screws inside. Normally, these screws are Phillips head. Um, in my case, one of them is a flat head because uh, I think I lost the, the proper screw and I just had to quickly replace it and find a new one to go in. So one of these is the Phillips head that came with the grip and the other one is some flat head that I had in my garage somewhere that I swapped in. Um, so there's one. But yeah, these screws are usually not hex, no matter what. I, I don't think I've seen a single gun ever where this was a hex screw in here. That would be very, very, very annoying. And there we go. So the grip should slide off. Now you might need to route the wires through the top. But um, it should all come out now. And just be careful. You don't want to lose those two screws. So mine are still in the grip. I don't know if you can see that. But mine are still in the spots. Don't lose those. Um, they, if you just like to put your grip down, they like to pop out. So I'm going to carefully put it down over there. Now you're left with this. So normally there's a pin right here that locks your gearbox in. This gun, that pin was removed. Um, my brother lost it a long time ago. We found the replacement, but it was like, it wasn't very, it didn't fit too well. It, was, it fit very loosely in this combination of lower receiver and neck box. So we just got rid of it. You technically don't need that pin for the gun to align and work properly. However, putting the pin in can't hurt. And more often than not, if you take the pin that came with the gun and it can't go in that spot, something is misaligned. So it, it's I don't recommend removing the pin, but if you lose it, for example, it's not the end of the world. Because that's not there, this gearbox should pop out. And the other thing I want to mention is because this gearbox is popping out already, this actually, the lower hop up, this fell out as well. Normally, you get to this point, take this pin out, raise the gearbox up, and then remove this piece from here. But mine fell out because my gearbox is loose already. So I'm going to take this. At this point, you can also remove the mock bolt catch usually. I'll do that after. So I'm going to work this around and get this gearbox out. And then actually, I'll, this, this wants to stay in there. So I'll leave that in there. Um, then just thread the wires through. You don't need to take apart the selector switch unless it's giving you problems. This one's very stiff still. I'm not going to touch it. So now this receiver can go to the side. And now we get to the part which I'm assuming any of you who are watching this video came to see, which is the actual DSG gearbox itself. So this is a very old gearbox. Um, there should be things wrong with it on the inside. It's not working, so we gotta got to figure that out. Um, but here we go. Start figuring this thing out. So... JG uses Torx screws on their gearbox shells. I forgot about that until I just opened this up. Which means I have a very small Torx bit, but I have to go find it now because I don't use it for anything else. Um, so sorry if this takes me a little bit.
found it. Yeah, so I have... It's actually a screw bit for a drill, and I just never bought the drill. I just bought the bit because I just needed a torque screw really quickly one day. Um, however, here we go. It's a T8. That's what JG Gearbox is. At least this is what they used to use. I don't know if they ever changed. But um, so gearbox screws I will keep all together. This will take a bit. I'm just literally unscrewing the gearbox screws. Um, Try to talk a little bit while I do this. So the the specs for this gun, when it was first built, it was shooting 300. To th it shot 330 FPS. The seal has declined a little bit, um, and then it also shot 56 rounds per second. It is a fairly stock gun actually. There, I, I changed very little inside here. Um, I gave it some different bushings because JG gearbox shell and bushing combo is very tight on most gears. It makes it very hard to shim. Um, I added a core SP160 spring, which is an old, I don't even make those anymore, it's an old spring. Uh, a, a ball bearing steel spring guy, I don't remember which brand, it's probably ZCI or, Su or Super Shooter, which is just like SHS. Um, then there's the Lonex A2 motor, SHS 16 to 1 or 18 to 1 gears, I forget which kind, and then a Gen 1 Siege Tech 8 tooth DSG with an SHS-15 tooth piston, I'm assuming an aftermarket piston head, some seal mods, and a Lonex air nozzle. And I think that's all that's changed in here. Everything else is stock in this gearbox. Um, yeah, pretty sure that's it. So we will see in a minute when we get in here. Now, I, yeah, I think I said in the beginning of the video, if I remember correctly, my suspicion for what was broken was the something to do with the piston, but I don't even remember if that was accurate because I this gun broke a long time ago. I just haven't had the time to sit down and open it up yet. Um, and this thing just needs to be poked through, if I remember. Yeah, the screw is more of a pin, not a screw. Um, There we go. Okay. So at this point, this is very, very critical. At the back of the gearbox, because of the very stiff spring in here, there's a hole that goes right through to the um, spring guide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this. This is essentially a punch. It was a pair of nose pliers, but it broke. I can remember a punch. Place this inside, and I'm going to use that to hold the gearbox. I'm going to downward press. I'm going to tilt this up, and I'm going to hold everything down from popping off. Then I'm going to slowly pry this open and I'm going to lift the top off and then put my hand over and take the spring out. And that's the proper way to use all that old grease in there. It's the proper way of relieving the stress on the system. So the good thing that I can see is it looks like none of the gears are stripped unless the bevel's hiding. Nope, awesome. None of the gears are stripped. That's the important part. Um, the tappet plate does not look broken, which is very important, because those are annoying to modify. Uh, which means, I'm assuming the piston is the culprit, but I will have to... Uh, this is an old, if I remember correctly, it's a very old piston that I slid like a, a hack Swiss cheese job on. It doesn't look broken. Hmm. Well, that's why we're in here, so let's take the rest of it out and really give it a good look over and see if there's something that we missed. Right, so, I'm probably going to remove everything and start cleaning it out. This is disgusting. Um, there's so much dirt in here, and I wonder why the seal gave way. But yeah, so the, uh, it was a ZCI spring guide. I can tell by the look of it, by the, the two prongs on the end. So ZCI spring guide, core SP160 spring, um, an SHS gear set. Usually the spur has the ratio on it, so I'll check it. Stock cylinder, completely stock cylinder assembly with a Lonex air nozzle. Uh, Siege Tech Gen 1, no, Gen 2, I lied. This is a, a, a Siege Tech Gen 2 8 tooth DSG. And then, let's see, 
16 to 1. 16 to 1 SHS gears. Hopefully you can see that. SHS logos there and there. And there's a 16 to 1 number uh, right there. All right, so we're going to put those aside and try and keep the shims intact. Because I will probably reshim this. However, um, if I don't have to, that would be very nice. Or if I can at least have like a baseline to kind of go off of, make it easier. AR latch looks like it's it's a little it's a little worn down, but I don't think that was the problem. Because these are supposed to be cut a little bit for compatibility sometimes. Oh, here you well, go. Here's a problem. So the bushing's broken. That's rare. Um. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm bringing it up to the camera a little bit. But um, if I put my hand behind, maybe you can see the top of the bushing is actually... Bur oh, there you go, you can see. It's not a circle. See how it's, it's a little chipped? Right there. GoPro's not the best at focusing, but you can see that it's it's chipped on the top. There's a piece missing. There's no circle. There you go. You can see that. So I don't know if that's what caused the failure. But maybe if that piece of metal got stuck somewhere else in the drivetrain and caused it to lock up, that could have been what happened. Again, it ha broke a while ago. I don't one hundred. I don't, I wasn't there when it broke. I just my brother was airsofting and came home. Well, Ryan, my dear, she stopped working. Um, so kind of going off of that with the problems. But first thing we should do is clean it because this is this is disgusting. This is all black and dirt and shavings of everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I will hopefully be able to diagnose this by the end of the night, and if not, then I'll put it back together, shoot it again, and get another feel for what's going on. Something you want to check for too is that sometimes these piston tracks can wear down and widen, and if these piston tracks widen too much the piston can actually swivel in its place and if it swivels see the teeth here if so let's say this is the piston right if it's swiveling a little bit the teeth the position changes and if it changes enough it can get to a point where it no longer contacts the sector gear teeth and then it will create some grinding noise because the gear teeth might barely contact it pulls it back a little bit and the spring force overcomes the force of the sector gear and it shoots back and they slip and grind and it just it's a very unpleasant noise that happens sometimes um, so that could have even been it too if if I thought it was a piston problem this piston clearly isn't stripped and that just goes to show I mean this is a SHS piston it's got a really franken Swiss cheese job from a long time ago but this piston was in my original DSG like that I built three years ago three plus years ago and then I replaced it and I just swapped it into my brother's DSG which when I, when I built it, which was two years ago. So this is a three and a half year old, probably, let's, let's be conservative, three year old SHS 15 tooth piston that has been Swiss cheese to death. There's so much material missing here. And not only is it still, I think I, I epoxied the rack in. That was the only mod I did to the piston. And I mean, there's, there's still, barely anywhere on these four teeth right here and the other ones I intentionally sh shaved down with a Dremel for AOE correction so I mean like there is some wear on the piston body but for for over three years a $15 piston in two separate guns that were shooting over 50 rounds a second this is absolutely insane in terms of quality or price of performance quality alright so Let's uh let's clean the rest of this stuff up. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping the piston actually did break, because then I would know what the problem was. But since it didn't, I may have to put the gun back together and test fire, or at least the gearbox back together and test fire it, and see if I can diagnose the issue. If it needs new bushings, that would suck because I mean, then you need to redo all the shimming. And JG gearboxes don't play nicely with many bushing brands because the gearboxes themselves are very, very tight. 
So it makes shimming extremely annoying to get done properly. Okay. So there's one half of the gearbox shell clean without taking too many unnecessary parts out. Um, yep, yeah, the wires don't look like they're being eaten into. Let's do this half. I'm actually going to. So this is spur, which means this is spur, and this is buckle. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that goes like that. Looks like this goes like there, and that goes here. Okay. Oh, this is awful. All right. So now again, I think it's just more cleaning. Um, unfortunately, I don't see, like, a glaringly obvious problem with the gearbox. The piston is old, and it's a little worn down, but it didn't look broken. It might be worth replacing it just in case it was the issue I pointed out, where the tracks widened, and it caused the, um, the contact between the sector gear and the piston teeth to be off. But... I, I can't say that for sure because there isn't like obvious wear on the tracks. It's just there is some because of how old it is. But I think I may have an extra FHS 15 tooth around. So if I do, it's probably worth putting in there. Um, all right, so shells are cleaned. This is usually really dirty, so I'll take this apart. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'll probably make this a two-part video, guys, if I'm going to have to go through and put this back together to diagnose the problem. Because I'll keep you here forever if I rebuild this just to take it apart again. Um, so if so, this, this whole video will be ending soon. And then I will, uh, I'll figure out the problem and then go through the, the rebuild process and what I had to change to fix it. All right, well, that's probably about it. Uh, I'm just going to clean the cylinder off. Nothing's broken, which I'm surprised, except for that one bushing. That one bushing I will end up replacing. Um, feet to the side. So there's the one bushing that chipped. I will replace that. However, the rest of this looks very solid. Um, I, I'm surprised. Not necessarily in a good way, because this means I don't know what's wrong with the gun. I mean, there's nowhere on the bevel, which is usually you find wear here. There's nowhere on the pinion. That means that the shimming, in terms of the pinion and bevel, was, was spot on. If this gun lasted two years at 56 rounds a second and there's nowhere on the pinion or bevel, that's just a, a proper shim job. Um, the spur... The spur has some wear on the top, and not necessarily wear, more like skid marks which means that the spur in the sector height is probably a little bit too close. I should probably add another shim, but because it's a JG gearbox, I don't think I have the room to add another shim, which is probably why I had it like the tiniest bit too low. Um, the tappet plate's fine, tappet plate spring's fine, air nozzle doesn't look cracked, uh, the o-ring looks fine on it. I, I can clean that out actually, I should clean that out actually, but um, the uh, the AOE correction in here is fine. The cylinder isn't. Sorry, and sometimes these cylinders, the stock ones, or it's a um, nylon body and a brass tube. The brass tube, we start to get unseated and move around. This is still solid and in place. The only thing I can think of is this piston body. 
That's legitimately it. But, I mean, the teeth aren't worn down, so it's not the teeth. The only thing it could be is if the piston tracks have widened, which they are worn. I, it's hard to p pinpoint on the camera, but these tracks right here, they are widened out and worn down. So I'm just going to probably have to assume that that is what did it, um, which means that when I rebuild the gun, I will throw a new piston in. I will rebuild the gun and I will test it, and it's either going to shoot or I'm going to still have a problem, at which point I will be able to diagnose the issue because then I eliminate the piston as a possibility and I go from there. Um, that's going to be my course of action. I'm going to end this video now, and part two will be me swapping in the new piston, rebuilding it, test firing it, and seeing if a problem persists. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that I entertained you that you were looking for some entertainment or some some teching time to pass. Um, sorry I've been gone for so long. I've been off forums for I've been, been administering the forum but not really commenting on it. Um, I haven't been doing any teching of my own. Actually I have if I can pan the camera over, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guns to build, not including this one. Um, and of those nine guns I might send two of them to Ryan Spurlock because one, I can't do nine guns in the time that I have over the summer before I go to school. And two, he's been looking for ideas to put on his channel. So I might give him some of my uh, my more fancy high-end builds so he can play around with them and have some motivation like I, like I have right now. All right, guys, that'll be it. I'm going to stop rambling now, and I will see you next time.